So welcome everybody. So glad you came to join us for a lunch and learn, or if you're with me in Arizona, a brunch and learn as the case may be. <laughs> um, we are going to talk about the three C's of image and we will get into what that means um, for your MSP in just a bit. But first, I'm pretty, pretty excited to uh, introduce Lisa Shore. Um, Lisa, I would love for you to uh, give us a little intro about yourself. Hey, everybody. I am so excited. Thanks, Marnie, for partnering with me today. We talked about this idea, and it's always so fun for it to come to fruition. So again, I'm Lisa Shore of Shore Success. And my I have two worlds. One, I own an MSP, just like almost all of you. And my mission with my MSP is to work with small businesses. We specialize in law firms and, and CPA firms and property managers. And we've been around for 30 years. So I've been on the scene for 24 of those 30 years. My husband, Eric, founded our business. So I've been in our community quite a bit. So my MSP is now a multi-million dollar MSP. I was a coach for Robin Robbins and Technology Marketing Toolkit for four and a half years. So I really got to learn and know the MSP community. But the main reason that I'm here with all of you today is with Sure Success. So Sure Success is my image and branding coaching side of my life, and it's my passion. And it's to help you guys really polish your brands. My MSP struggled for a good five years straight. And I couldn't figure out how to grow profits, couldn't figure it out until a client fired us. And I don't know if anybody here was at IT Nation with me and I shared this story on the stage, but a car dealership client fired us because they said, every time I call, you act as if you have no idea who I am. That was like a punch in the stomach because I had wonderful engineers who were so tech savvy and we were giving them certifications and I was getting us written up in publications. But what I didn't realize is we really weren't honing in on the image and the human side of my business and really training there. So that's where I come in today, Marnie. That's, the, that's really where my mission with Shore Success is to create a paradigm shift from thinking that all we need are tech skills to really understanding that it's those interpersonal skills and communication skills that really set us apart from the rest. So head on over to Channel Pro later on. You can read my articles. You can see, you know, it's called Brand Bites. And honestly, keep following me for coaching and image tips. I'm a member of the Association of Image Consultants. I think I'm the only one in our industry, Marnie, that, and everybody here that is actually focusing in on really image training and cutting edge image training that I can bring to all of you. So that's why that's me in a nutshell. So I am, I'm excited to have the conversation because I come from the world of customer success. So I am Marnie Stockman, CEO of Lifecycle Insights. Thanks all for joining us. Um, but I started out as a high school math teacher uh, where I say, you know, clearly I know something about sales because I sold pre-calculus to 16 year olds. And, and if you think the three C's we're going to talk about today don't make a difference in teaching, I want you to think back to the teachers that you loved the ones that you didn't. And uh, I think you will find that the messages that Lisa and I share um, really hold true. And if it's true about educators, it's also true about your business um, because really your image, what you're projecting out there is teaching others how, um, how you want to engage and how they can engage with you. And I think that happens in quarterly business reviews. So um, customer success, the human element, and of course, Lifecycle Insights is a QBR reporting platform. But whether or not you are a life cycler, the, the tips that we bring to the party today are going to be about how you project your image in your communications with your clients. Um, and again, it's from websites, your human uh, interface with people, the way you communicate. And, and I'm a firm believer that quarterly business reviews are, are the way you have ongoing communications with your clients. So for sure, you would want that car dealership to know that you know them and care about their business. So uh, we're excited to chat today in case you've been curious what those three C's are. Uh, we are, we're going to chat about um, consistency, congruency, and credibility, uh, and then we have some takeaways for you. So before we start with the three C's, Lisa, you talk about the two I's of image first. So yeah. I'd like for you to, to tee us up with that, and then we'll jump into consistency. 
So I couldn't agree with you more. QBRs, or maybe some people call them technical business reviews, what sure, have you. you. Whatever you want. <laughs> Whatever's in your wheelhouse, in your MSP, the most important thing we can do is meet with our clients regularly. So I am in such you know, an agreement and alignment and congruency with Lifecycle Insights. We'll talk about that in a moment. But the two eyes of image. So let's take a quick step back. And I want you guys to take notes on this and stick it on a post-it note. This is the only thing I will ever want you to put on your monitor are the two eyes and the three C's. Yeah, and never these are not password. your passwords. <laughs> <laughs> never a password. And these should not be your password either. You guys know this well. But the two eyes, intention versus interpretation. So that means that our intentions are to run a great business. Our intentions are to answer phones. Our intentions are to run reports. Our intentions are to you know, monitor client networks, get the word out of what we're doing. However, there's the interpretation side. And it's critical to understand that everybody is different. Everybody comes from a different set of backgrounds, countries, regions of, the country, of our country, different parents or upbringings. Right, so we all bring a different set of values and perceptions to the table. So we may interpret what you're delivering completely different. So let's talk about the QBR. We'll, we'll, we'll get started there. If you are saying, yeah, let's meet, and we're gonna delve deeper into this with the three Cs, but you are not prepared, and you're sloppy, you, you look like a hot mess, you sound like, you know, you don't have reports, you don't have accurate data, but yet you're meeting with your clients, right? So you're doing the right thing and you're sitting, well, what could be the interpretation? What could be that perception? So, so that's where we, deep, we delve deeper. Well, you're reminding me of Malcolm Gladwell's book, Blink. Yes. So in Blink, um, they did a lot of research on students watching teachers, and they found out that in two seconds, in a black and white, no audio recording of a teacher, a student could um, score that teacher the same way an observer who was scoring that teacher on their effectiveness. So you basically have two seconds to make an impression on someone, you don't even have to speak, doesn't even have to be in color, right? You have two seconds to make that impression. So to your point, if you're if you're not coming into your client engagement, projecting the right image, right? Your um, intention may be one thing, but the interpretation of that's gonna be entirely Huge. different. Huge, I mean, so let's think about that. We need to be confident. We need to be put together. We need to also make sure, by the way, and a successful QBR doesn't just happen. Our deployments have to be clean and kempt and, and the wiring and the engineers. And so we're, we're going to get to that in a second. I think I'm jumping ahead, but I get so passionate about this, Marnie, that I can't. No, I hear you. So, <laughs> so a little framework. We're going to try to talk five-ish minutes on each of the C's, but it's interesting because they do certainly overlap. But when I was taking notes and I've got two full pages of notes sitting in front of me. So if I look over, it's only because I didn't want to forget. I really did try to parse them out. So they didn't all become the same C um, because yeah. sometimes the language uh, is important. So, so let's jump into consistency. First consistency, we've got these from the Oxford English Dictionary. Conformity in the application of something, typically that which is necessary for the for the sake of logic, accuracy, or fairness. So I have some words written down as they as they apply to business and business reviews. But when it comes to image, when you think consistency, what are what are the bullet points that you hit? So my first, before I say that, I, if anybody has any questions, throw them in the chat. I can Absolutely. see the chat. <laughs> so please throw them in there and I'm happy to answer, like if something comes up and we say something, let's make this as interactive as we can with the chat. So yeah. please do that. Feel comfortable to do that. When I think consistency, my first, first comment is to everybody, our clients crave consistency. Trust so children for the record, like everyone really carries consistency. It's pretty really. <laughs> we like schedules, we like consistency, we like the expectation of what they're going to get. 
So when we're thinking about consistency, we need to think about is everything we're saying during the sales process now holding true. So if you're telling people that you're responsive, are you responding? Are you telling people that you are the, you know, the best MSP? Well, when you answer the phone, do you sound friendly every time? Do you make your clients feel like a VIP every time? Yep. So that's what, you know, I, I mentioned, I gave you a mea culpa, like right in the beginning, I lost a client, which then shifted my whole world didn't realize that that was going to happen, but I shifted my whole world Yeah, because we weren't consistent. We were saying we were great MSP and we were giving them good service. We had tech savvy engineers, but we were not consistent. Our engineers didn't look consistent with what we were saying. So they, we took that much better stock in how they look, grooming, uniforms. We were, are you consistent? When you're answering the phone with a script, do you have a script in your MSP of how to answer your phone? So everybody sounds the same. Everybody knows the process. So nobody is saying, oh, I don't know. Or I don't know that answer. I, I don't, you know, we can't do that. Yeah. So we want though everything consistent, the way you look, the way you sound, the way you behave. Your presentation. Your which- kind of leads into QBR. It's interesting because it's very much the human element when you speak to image. Gartner did a survey that said um, small businesses expect 85% of their engagement with their enterprise partners, like a managed service provider would be an enterprise partner for a small business, should be automated. But the other 15% should be human and personal. So Mm -hmm. it is about how you're presenting in that 15%, but also the personalized piece, I think is really important to the point of your story of the car dealership felt like you didn't know them. So, you know, to need, how do you show them that you know them, right? And it's, again, there's some, there's some practices in there. When I think about um, the, the consistency C in terms of how you're presenting in a business review, are you reliable? Right. So if you said in your SLA uh, or your MSA agreement that you were going to um, have quarterly business reviews, did you say quarterly? Then you need to meet with them quarterly. Did you say we'll have regularly scheduled business reviews, in which case totally acceptable answer, because not everybody needs a quarterly one. Um, But do you stick to that? Right. That's step one. And to your point, I said it in the sales process. Am I following up with once we're go live and onboarded? Next up is, do you have a repeatable process to make that easy? So a lot of people, um, at Lifecycle Insights is a thing because my business partner who was an MSP struggled to cobble together. That was literally, I think, I think it still might be some of the industry term, right? To cobble together the reports. When you're cobbling together reports from different places, yeah, you're all over the place, right? Two things with that. First, hard to build consistency into it when you're cobbling together. Second, it's not repeatable. And third, there's this whole notion of being easy to understand. So think about if I put within an hour, seven different reports that I pulled from seven different systems, that's so hard to understand, right? It's, it is like, I, you have to relearn how to think every time you look at a new chart or graph. Really type of thing. Yeah. So I think, um, you know, you mentioned setting expectations of what you're going to do and then follow through with them um, is really the key to consistency. And some of that, that's an interesting place for me to kind of jump to congruency because consistency is doing this, is doing the same thing over and over and over again. So there's alignment with that. Congruency is the quality of agreeing, being suitable and appropriate. And I think this furthers what you said about the alignment piece. So what's your take yeah. on the congruency? So congru- before I get to congruency, I want to, so Kelly Connery, thank you for making a comment. She actually said, it is getting harder for our techs as they need to verify who they are versus going off of voice, but they can still be personable. So I'm glad you brought that up, Kelly. And then I'm going to get to congruency and just one yeah, 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 no, I love it. may. Kelly, it is hard for our techs. One of the key areas I want you to write down on that post-it note is use names. Use names. That's one way that they can be personable and friendly. Hey, Joe. Hey, Jim. Hey, Marnie. Hey, Kelly. 
how are you? I hear you can't find that file. Or I hear you, you know, you want to, or if you're maybe the one making the appointment, hey, Kelly, it's time for us to make a QBR, you know, make an, our, our appointment together. Can we do that today? What's your schedule look like? So using names will help to not just go off your on your voice, but will help to create that personable relationship. Well, and the so, other piece is, I think, some humor along the way. Um, I, you know, I'll have people email me and say, hey, we, I, you know, I lost my MFA authenticator or, you know, can you reset my password X, Y, or Z? And then I, of course, am going to have to call them on a different line and get someone to confirm that they are the human that they think they are, right? And I know this human well that just emailed me, right? If they're emailing me directly to ask me to reset something, you can bet I know them but I can't take an email's word for it. So when I call, I will jokingly say, well, this is your human multi-factor authentication, you know, and we'll <laughs> speak to them and confirm that I've got the same detail that I know about them in person. So I think humor goes a long way when you are going to have to do a technical check. And frankly, I, even people that were surprised and were probably a little annoyed at first that I didn't just automatically click the button when they send over the email, when I say, you know what, we take your security super seriously. So um, you are going to have to tell me where I met you last or whatever. Right. And they're like, oh, I, I had fun hanging out with you at IT Nation. Perfect. You've, you know, and, and that piece, like it's because I care about your security that I am doing this, that even a situation that may be it technical in nature still can be human. 100%. So Kelly, thank you for bringing that up. I think that was a critical comment that you made. So please guys keep bringing them in. I, we love this. This is what really brings all of this conversation to life. So when it makes it more tactical, right? It makes, it gives you actual really action does. items. Um, so we're kind of talking high level, but we're trying to bring some actionable things that you can do. That's why you've got the post-it note you're taking notes on. <laughs> Take your notes. Take your notes. However you do it. So congruency. So let's go back to congruency. So yeah. congruency. So to speak Marnie's language in mathematics, it was like that line. It's telling, you know, it's one line. Is everything congruent on that line? And the same thing in image is, is really that harmony, that agreement that what you're saying really is in alignment with what you're doing. And there's several factors that come into play. They actually begin when the phone is answered. If you're telling people during the sales process that you're friendly and personable and you make them their VIP, but you sound disinterested on the phone, then you're gonna break that trust. Your deployments, when you're doing impl implementations and you've got a ton of wires and it's a mess and you leave it a mess, that perception does not align with, and, and that could create in someone's mind, well, if their project work is a mess, yeah. maybe they are personally a mess too. And can they really be trusted to handle my my business, my my needs, my sophisticated needs, and the well, same they thing. They want to project a professional outcome as well. So if you're not helping them project that, right, right you are trying to help them drive their business outcomes. Huge. And, and your professionalism impacts their look of professional. Isn't that the best? Isn't that the most important part, Marnie? Is that oh. the why we do things is so that our clients do can grow their businesses. Yeah, their success is your success. Yeah. Their success only means our success. It means that we're able to upsell them, develop a longer relationship, renew contracts. When it Get comes referrals, to time, right? Have oh, yeah. Huge, huge. Those sure. referrals are the best part. They're the when best. When you and part. I were talking about this, we talked about some tactical things that people could do right away to see if their messaging was off. And um, yeah. at the end, I'll give a checklist on what this, you know, so you can go back and, and really ask yourself some questions. But I think what you mentioned is, is what sales says is going to happen and what the customer success account That's management, here. like whatever you call them, um, they really do impact each other on both ends of that. So I worked for a company and they, they pitched a large, it was an RFP, it was a $1.4 million deal, and they had it was on Valentine's Day, so they had made little uh, M and M's that said the company plus the this the 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 school district we were working for uh, forever, right? And the school system came to me and said, "You can't tell people." Although I'm telling you all now, um, they said, but. The other company came in very disheveled and haphazard. And I thought like, if we're dating in this RFP process, right, 
the company that's projecting the image that they want to be my partner is the one that's going to want to win. So in the, in the land of what does this look like? Does your company culture align with your website, align yes. with your actual practices? If your website, you know, what's your tagline? Does that align with, you know, do you say we're not going to talk nerd words to you and then you get a technical resource on the call and they talk flux capacitors. Do you say you're strategic? And then your business review talks about patch stats and the land that things are not strategic to me is, is patch stats and spam stats, right? So right. do your words, actions, practices, policies, and procedures all align to really what's driving your business, your culture and your vision? It goes also in inclusion to that. It goes with like, if, you're re if you've rebranded, are you using, and a lot of people do invoicing all online now, but does all of your invoicing, your stationery, whatever, is it all in alignment with the same branding? What do you look like on social media? So yeah. are you presenting yeah. a presence of actually engaging or are you just throwing content out there that doesn't really create a relationship that doesn't really try to build authority, trust, credibility. So really taking a step back and looking at all the factors that you say you're going to do, what are your core values and are they in alignment with that so that the client on the other end believes you, trust. Well, you. you slipped in the next word because I think you had said, you told me beforehand, if you are consistent and congruent, that leads to what? Credibility. <laughs> yes. <Yeah. laughs> that is the most, one of the most important. That's my, that's my goal when I'm coaching anybody, Marnie. This is my, 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 whether it's my own MSP or any MSP that I'm working with, the goal is to really align and really have that credibility nailed down. Yeah. What does it mean? So once you have consistency and you show up to QBRs consistently, you have the same, like a QBR, we don't want them to be boring, of course, but clients really crave, okay, what are you going to share with me? Tell me how my numbers are. Tell me what, you know, about my tickets. Tell me what, what, what's getting, what's expired. What, you know, what assets do I need to work on? And maybe you start talking about replacing, how can I budget for next year? And, you know, you're able to build up that discussion. You sound empathetic, you sound excited when you need to, but you vary your voice. You show up looking the part of uh, whether you're an owner or a sales manager or an account manager, whatever role you are. They're, in a suit. They're not going to ask you to crawl under the table and run wires that day, right? <laughs> exactly. Seriously. So once, and then that congruency is you're, you're in alignment, you're showing up on time. If you say your response time is important, well, it's not just on the ticket side of things. It's also showing up to your meetings on time. It's showing up to and your engineer showing up on time or within the window that you give, setting expectations, all of that builds that brand credibility. And that's huge because once there's credibility and trust, well, then, then there's a true partnership, right? Then there's a true partnership, that feeling, that feeling. I'll give a little teaser. I'm actually writing a book on this whole process. And, and Marnie's actually gave me inspiration to finish chapter 10, which is my last chapter. And that's on social media, but that's, it's really all about that feeling. How do we feel? How does the client feel? You're not selling widgets or, you know, or a sonic wall or what have you, what you're selling. You're not selling that. Oh, I partner with Lifecycle Insights. That's what they don't, it's critical. But what they want to know is you're selling uptime. You're selling yeah. them the ability to be profitable for them. Yeah, yeah. So that's what you're selling. You're selling that belief, that feeling, that emotion. And that's so if you're credible. Say, people don't remember what you said, but they remember how you made them feel, right? Yeah, Maya Angelou, you know, yep. Part yep. of the image piece and also part of what you're delivering to them. When I look at credibility specifically, if I'm looking at like actionable items in a business review, um, 
you mentioned the word earlier, accurate, that you've got solid data, right? Um, somebody, this is a weird flex, but I'll say it anyway. Somebody posted on social media the other day, my favorite thing about Lifecycle Insights is they showed us where our data was crap. Well, you're welcome. But but they felt <laughs> like when they were just cobbling together reports, they didn't know. So we're going to tell you where you've got duplicates and tell you where, where you're missing pieces so you can fix it. Because if you're not accurate and you go in and say, we need to replace all of these assets. And then they say, but what about Lisa? She's got, you know, a you know, a machine from 1912. And you're thinking like, oh, I, that was a miss, right? You lose some of the credibility piece. Um, so transparency around, it's their data as well, right? So not to just to be accurate, but to be transparent about it, because this is their business, right? And I think right. a lot of people, um, one of our partners, Dave, talks about being stewards of their client's data. They're not the owners of it. They are stewards of the data and they're ensuring security around it. So, so they should be transparent about it. Uh, and then the other places I think where credibility comes into play is if you are an educator and an authority on the subject, which for sure, you don't have to be an authority on the law to be the MSP for a lawyer, right? What you need right. to be is you need to be able to educate them on why lawyers need secure, stable, supportable technology to drive their business outcomes. So to be able to educate and put yourself in that position of authority, um, I was talking to some MSPs last week at IT Nation who want to do some webinars for their partners for small businesses to show why the technology is important and educate them on those pieces um, because that builds their credibility. Um, and the other piece of that is I want to say, I mean, consistency and congruency, critical to this, but will, mistakes will often happen. And when a mistake happens, you need to also think about how that looks um, and acknowledge it because no one is perfect. So while we're aiming to be consistent, and I'll use myself as a case in point on this one, I, uh, I sent out an email uh, through our marketing system. So I've got, you know, thousands of people in there and I meant to hit a tag that would have 48 people get the email and instead 14,000 people got the email. And mm -hmm. one of my, one of our partners sent back, uh, Hey Marnie, I think there was a glitch in your, in your CRM. And I replied back, I would love to blame this on a glitch, but this was a human problem. And honestly, I forgot to tell you. So like, I'm not going to, I'm not going to fall behind the technology. This was me. I apologize. He's like, oh no, no, happens all the time. Right. But if I had pretended like my marketing system had had a glitch, right. <laughs> it did not. I did that. So, right? You don't um, want to play that blame game. You're absolutely no, right, Barney. Like ownership, no. image, credibility comes in when we take that. I think that's a huge point that you just mentioned. A lot of people blame the tech, they blame this, they blame that. They're not taking ownership. So we we end up so then credibility is is hurt and could be broken because Correct. now they're not taking ownership. And and MS and, and our clients want us to take ownership. They're not always going to like it. And you're right, when something happens during the consistency and credibility and congruency, excuse me, phase, it takes a lot to rebuild that trust, to rebuild. They'll, they'll never rebuild it if, if it appears to be a lie or false. Exactly. You can right. regain the political capital, but you cannot, once, once, you have, once you've established that they can't ever trust you, when the trust is broken, then for sure you're stuck. I am, I'm going to stop sharing for a minute only because I want to share a couple links in the chat and this is the only way I can get to it. <laughs> so, uh, and then I will throw that back up so that um, we can get our get our um, emails and LinkedIn pieces out. But I wanted to share two things with the folks that are in the chat. And I will, if you are listening to the recording, I'm going to email this out as well. One is I'm putting a link to the PDF, your, the QBR your customer deserves. So if you want to see what, what our output looks like in terms of a consistent business review. But the other piece is I made a checklist of um, that you can use. It's 10 questions to see if your business reviews are consistent, congruent, um, credible. And so I am gonna put that one in there too. Wanna be respectful of folks time, but I'm gonna throw our last two slides back up and, uh, and we'll answer any questions. So again, if you have questions, now is the time to throw them in the chat. 
Oh, you know, wow. I want to give you kudos, Marnie. I think for someone who, you know, when we talk about consistency, congruency, credibility, all of your, I, I want to give, I want, this is, this is completely unscripted. <laughs> unplanned, <laughs> we're going off script. <laughs> but we're putting it on recording. Marnie has, when she says she's going to do something, she follows through. Not only does she follow through, so she's consistent with her word, but she's also in alignment with, you know, we find ways to have harmony. We find ways to work together. We find that mutual conversation and, and, and it works and it, and it comes out to be a great discussion like this. And, and so, and then, you know, the handouts that she's created for you guys, is just a perfect round out of demonstrating consistency, congruency, and really building that credibility in this industry, Marnie, that you have. So congratulations and kudos. Well, thank you. I uh, I put my I would love to connect with folks on LinkedIn if they want to have any conversation about this. But I'm going to jump to your slide. Um, so if anybody wants to connect, the beauty of being named both Marnie Stockman and Lisa Shore is that we are easy to find on LinkedIn because there's only one of us. <laughs> yeah. um, <laughs> you know, and here's Lisa's information. So the interesting piece is when we started talking about having this conversation, right? So again, Lisa is all about image and branding and comes from a very human, the actual people place, making the people better, right? And yes. we aim through business reviews, making the communication among people better. And at first they may not seem to marry up, but when we started talking about this, we easily could have made this a four hour webinar, but you know, I'm not sure you all can get away with four hour lunches because we're busy people. So we decided to try to keep it to 30 minutes. But if you ever want to extend the conversation with either of us, um, we're both happy to chat. And I know for a fact, like we would just chat and you don't, you don't need to be a, a sure successor or a life cycler to want to have a conversation about, you know, right. we you can ways you can improve things or maybe problems that you have in the space. So if you do, please do reach out to us. Um, again, I want to be respectful of the time. I told folks we'd have a, a lunch and learn. So hopefully you've uh, you've lunched and learned. <laughs> I hope you have. And, you know, think about those QBRs when you're meeting with clients. It's not, it's, it's, it's really the marriage of the two. You can have the wonderful reports and the data and all of that. Now add in the confidence of delivering that data, the confidence of looking, sounding excited when you need to sound excited empathetic when you need to sound empathetic. Did you hear the drop in my voice? That was very intentional. It's so important that we are aware that we dress, we sound, our nonverbal messaging all aligns so that when you are actually delivering those QBRs, they are believable, they are welcome, they are also something that they, you know, your clients take action on because right? We want, that's a great opportunity to upsell if, when it's that time, it's a great opportunity to ask for referrals, ask for testimonials. So it's a critical, critical meeting. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much for joining me for this brunch and learn, lunch and learn. <laughs> <laughs> I can see a, a, a Q and a, um, I, oh, I, did I not, this is very typical me that I would, um, let me post the checklist if I did not. Let me, I probably put it to Lisa, which is super not helpful. Let me uh, stop so sharing so I can put it in the chat. Um, oh, to host and panelist. Yep, that's me. Let me post it to everybody. Thank you very much, <laughs> everyone. That is, uh, all right. So I posted the, so you should be able to see it now. Double check that it you've got- It says to everyone now. Now it says to everyone. Perfect. Yeah, I didn't even notice that it said to host and panelists. I just saw it. I'm like, oh, great. And so, then the QBR as well. Perfect. Okay. Well, thank you all for joining. I'm going to, okay. as usual, jump into another meeting. So <laughs> have an awesome day, everybody. Be aware of the power of you and how impactful and inter the interpretation process is when building a, a business, when building a brand, and of course, delivering QBRs. So thank you, Marnie. Absolutely. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Have a good one. Have a great one. Bye-bye.